So, hello together to my course, Macroeconomics in International Business Studies. I think it's your third term now. Yep. Okay. So, I think in general economics you had already microeconomics last uh, term or the first term, I don't know. And yeah, now we will take maybe a bit the broader view from the macro side and this macro side is yeah in our times especially important if we look at the corona pandemics if we <coughs> look at what prices are right now doing what is inflation what drives inflation um, what does it mean for the business cycle what does it mean for economic growth in general and so on and all these are questions we will deal here in this course of macroeconomics. Well, uh, you and you at this university and uh, therefore I will just say some words about myself. My name Bernard Gerster. Um, I'm also not that long at this university. Um, here since uh, 2019 and yeah um, if you look at my CV there is maybe something different because at first I studied um, physics and did there my diploma and then I did a diploma in economics and then I did my PhD in <coughs> economics and well this is Maybe in this time a quite funny situation because I did my um, PhD in economics about central banks and about inflation and how central banks, especially supranational institutions like the ECB, where we have no single country <coughs> with a central bank, but we have a <coughs> monetary union and how um, to deal with the problem of stable prices and inflation in such um, an institution of the ECB, a supernatural institution where actually the countries have given their rights to some general institution. And this was my, my topic in my PhD in the beginning of the new uh, <coughs> 2000s. And, well, if we go back 20 years, mm -hmm. there, more or less, and I will show you also um, a long time series of development of prices. In these times, around 2000, 2005, mm -hmm. we more or less thought worldwide the problem of stable prices in industrial countries is more or less solved. When we looked at inflation in European countries, in Germany, this was flat around 2%. The aim, the principal aim where central banks want to have prices. In the United States, maybe a bit higher, but not more than 4%. And we really thought that we can look from the macro side on the business cycle and then we are raise uh, interest rates or we cut interest rates a little bit, 25 um, basis points and not 75 um, basis points like that, like uh, yesterday the Fed in the United States did, and that we can steer prices more or less around 2%. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was always almost done with my PhD, where I switched to the um, Council of Economic Advisors um, in the scientific staff of Germany. And I switched there uh, in the year 2008. Mm -hmm. And maybe you know what happens mm -hmm. to the world economy in 2008. <laughs> Any idea? Yeah. Finance crisis. Yes, the finance crisis and the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, especially 
the sixth largest investment bank in the world, and this drove the whole financial system of the world um, deeply down, and yeah, it almost exploded more or less. And since this time, everything switched. What we are thought we know about inflation and prices, and what we are thought what should central banks do because in the aftermath of the financial crisis then especially the european central bank and the fed in the united states they uh, started uh, programs with cutting interest rates to zero percent nominal interest rates because they tried somehow to push the economy interest rates is nothing more than the price of money price of a credit and it, if this price for a credit is low then the simple math is that you think it is easy to get a credit so i take this credit and i will spend the money and therefore the economy can be pushed well then came the euro crisis in uh, the uh, european union so there was not a really a real push from this very very low interest rates but still we had then zero interest rates for almost or for more than 10 years and also we started programs like quantitative easy easing this means that the central banks more or less directly bought credits from the financial market so if you have somewhere any um, <clears throat> any credits in the financial market, then the central bank in the United States and in <clears throat> the European Union just said, in case we will buy it. And therefore, government debt in the European Union is right now hold by around 25-30% by the European Central Bank and the, more or less the same we have in the United States. And what does it mean? This means we take the credit by ourselves. Because to whom belongs the ECB? To the members of the European Union. And what is the European Union? The European Union are we. So we take the credits by ourselves. And this is around one-fourth or one-third of our debt. Mm -hmm. And this is really zero interest rates. We hold our own debt. This is really what is totally new about the last 10 years. And usually the classical explanation would be then, well, if we have some Thing like this that you really increase the money base because that if the central banks just buy the credits from the private market this just means creating money and if the money is increasing then in general we would say that prices will go up this we will also do this is uh, <clears throat> um, some theory some classical theory which we will do also in this course and so we sought in the last 10 years more or less well somehow the prices should increase this was the aim of the central banks because we had always inflation rates between uh, 0 percent and 1 percent more or less in the last 10 years and then not only because of the um, war in the Ukraine, but just before, in, the, in autumn 21, winter 21, before the war started, prices started to increase. There it started to 4 to 5%, and then additionally, we have the energy crisis caused by the war in the Ukraine, and right now we have 8% inflation in Germany and I think it will go on that we have two-digit um, inflation rates in the next months. Mm -hmm. 
So all this and how can we explain this is what macroeconomics is about and yeah unfortunately fortunately more or less uh, this is a topic which I deal with um, the last 20 years. <laughs> so this um, yeah to my person um, after I entered the scientific staff in um, um, of economic advisors in in Germany um, then I uh, go into yeah let's say the uh, private capital market I worked in the insurance sector and the financial sector for some years and uh, then I got back uh, to the academic side and since 2015 I'm a professor in economics especially in the field of macroeconomics and also quantitative um, methods and I already said it uh, since 2019 I'm here and yeah since then I'm more or less generally every term I read uh, the lecture um, macroeconomics so this uh, to my person that you know what's um, about with this person here in front of you and yeah if you have um, individual questions during the semester term just come to me ask me after the lecture of course or um, yeah what's the easiest way um, to reach me is just write me an email and then you get a feedback and maybe we meet here in my office or we take a zoom meeting webex or something anything else all this we le we learned to the the pandemics um to do this okay uh i think the other things i put in in the general part the organization yes so there it is uh so i already said it um if all the techniques uh, uh, the technique is working then I will record it and I will provide you also to end the lecture via a zoom link but of course I'm also happy if I look here in in class in to the faces and um, I really can say this um, to you from my own time at university that the social interaction when you are studying this is quite an asset <laughs> if you will take it economically so uh, since I recorded um, I put it uh, the um, uh, the videos on YouTube but my YouTube channel, um, there is, uh, it looks like a, a little bit chaotic because I don't have really time <laughs> to look at this. But on my homepage, if you click here, all blue, um, yeah, there you have also direct the links um, for my homepage. Then uh, you will find there the direct links from for the videos uh, to YouTube and. Um, also on my homepage, you will um, get the slides. Uh, you will get there the pure slides, uh, like today. But when we start lecture, then of course I'm writing down anything here on the slides, and also uh, all this I also save and will provide you after the lecture also via my homepage. Um, and um, yeah, also we have the Moodle course um, has all. Um, everybody here in class already entered the Moodle course yes of course but I will do I, I, I won't do it twice uh, primarily um, everything every content uh, of the lecture you will find then on my home page maybe well it will take um, some days uh, that I, I can upload this because I have uh, <coughs> more lectures than this um, in this term but um, after some days um, you will, you will find uh, the material on my homepage and uh, the Moodle course is for me primarily for our direct conversation um, with announcement um, if something is changing 
actually, if we change the room here in general um, <clears throat> for this one, um, then I will announce this via uh, the Moodle course. I think you, if I take the announcement there, then you get a direct email on your uh, student um, email account. So, and if anything else in an organizational way or so, I will put also in the Moodle course. Okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, you will get the slides, you will get the edited slides, you will get um, the videos. Um, in the end of the lecture, I will also provide you some uh, revision questions and uh, we will do, of course, also some exercises, sometimes directly within the lecture or with uh, some um, additional exercise sheets and so on. And yeah, all this content, this uh, is in the end then needed for the exam. And if anything mis is missing there or so, just <laughs> Give me a hint, um, and then we will fix it. Okay, so I think that it was from my side what all the org organization of this course um, is about. So any questions about the organization? No question at this time. If oh yeah, yep. We, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. This question for uh, one <laughs> and two. <laughs> okay, I will uh, answer it. You have also a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So three questions. Um, the first, uh, I will just come in a second to the literature. But in general, I do not follow any specific book. So I um, will give you my own lecture, my own view about macroeconomics. So I'm not uh, just following. I think I gave it also here in the first slides. I had here my part. So I'm not just taking the slides of the Menkyu or the Blanchard, the maybe most known uh, books on macroeconomics worldwide. Um, I know that many lecturers just download the slides uh, from these two books. I think this is my point of view. If Gregory Menkyu, a real, really good macroeconomist, economist in the world. He also he was, yeah, in the uh, or maybe he was uh, the uh, advisor um, in economic questions of um, President Bush uh, this um, twenty years ago. Um, so I think if he is giving his lecture following his own book then this will be a very good lecture. If I, I take the slides of the Mengu and just going through the slides of the Mengu, I don't know if this would be really a good lecture. And therefore, I think um, it is worth that I do my own lectures. But I will come uh, to this part in more detail. Uh, so what was your second question? I forgot. Yes. Um, no, there will be unfortunately no tutorial uh, because my tutors from the last <laughs> semesters, uh, they quit right now because they made their master or their bachelor and um, I haven't found any new right now. So unfortunately, um, I have no tutorial, but uh, I will give you um, all my tutorial exercises. Uh, this is then the part I said uh, on my homepage, then additional exercises. I will get, you will get all these um, exercises and um, some weeks later, you will get also um, the solutions for these exercises. And so you can 
exercise by your own also with this additional material. But again, we do exercises here in the lecture. We do, and then I uh, come to your question. You have my slides, but you have my edited slides, and so on all this, what I'm doing here in this lecture, this is then finally the content for the exam. So because in the um, tutorial, then we have maybe much more or uh, from all also looking from other sites and so on. So you don't need um, to, uh, to do the additional exercises um, in order to have all content for this um, uh, course. And um, then your question is, are the slides um, are enough? And there um, I can say, um, well, no, they are not enough because um, they are not that in uh, not in that detailed way that you can just say, well, then every two weeks or every th three weeks I'm going th through th through the slides and um, then I have everything what I need. Um, the slides I provide to you and that you also then you make your own notices, you um, write down what I'm saying uh, about this topic or another topic and that you edit it by your own. And I think this is a way how you should study, that you're not only just reading one book or reading through some slides and then I pose afterwards in the exam the question um, more or less recapitulate uh, the five points um, what is uh, um, what is the um, what are the causes for demand of money and maybe slide 113 or something and then I will hear, hear this only <laughs> so this is not what the exam is about but this is um, of course something um, you uh, you take for your own and you make your own writings to this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, I just meant like working your upbringing and just as much as I thought that you have actually, since we don't have an artist in Yes, of course. So in this way, it is like uh, your textbook and I also come to your literature because I, I want and um, so then we can go to the literature. And of course, you find here the Blanchard and uh, the Menkyu as um, textbooks. And I would really recommend that you have a look into these textbooks because many things um, I do not take one to one from these textbooks. But the topics, of course, of some models of uh, what is economic growth, um, <clears throat> what is unemployment, and so on. This is, uh, of course, you find this also in these um, standard textbooks, but I do not follow any textbook one-to-one. -one. And for this, you more or less can take my slides and my uh, content of my lecture. Yeah? Okay, so another question. Oh yeah, great. <laughs> Because uh, I don't know um, uh, how you have done it um, the last uh, term in your lectures. So I ask you, you can choose. Uh, we can do a classical exam in, in presence, 90 minutes, or we can do something, I don't know how to translate it <coughs> into English, um, is a e Hausarbeit or e-homework, and this uh, would be then that we have uh, for this a Moodle room, and then we have 90 minutes, like an exam in presence, let's say from 10 to 11.30, 30. and then at 11 o'clock, you can download uh, the, um, the questions, then you have uh, 90 minutes, like an, an exam in presence, write everything down, then afterwards you have um, something about 50 minutes in order to digitalize it. Uh, you can also, <coughs> if you want, uh, directly write down like I do it here on a laptop and write it here. 
as you like it. Uh, you just digitalize it. You can uh, choose uh, some scan apps from your um, smartphone. Um, I also provide um, for this uh, some hints how <coughs> you e can easily uh, digitalize something you have written down on a sheet of paper. And uh, yeah, then you upload it and then I correct it. And these are just uh, two different kinds um, of organization of the exam. The content is the same. So there is absolutely from the content what you have to learn and what you have to do. No difference if we write it in presence or if we write it as an e-Hausarbeit or e-Homework. So in my German um, courses, almost everybody, I don't know how it will be um, this term, how about the last terms, they always say it, uh, well, <coughs> they choose the decentralized way, well, it's just up to you how you want to do it. But this, um, this will be open, I think, let's say two weeks and then you can choose. You can talk to each other. Maybe you talk also uh, to, to other students. I don't know um, what kind of exam forms uh, did you have um, the last semester or in the first semester we had, we had purely, we were, you had purely dig digitalized uh, forms. Maybe you have already done it. So you know it, what, what it means. <laughs> yeah. Any more explanations from my side or? So actually I know also that um, other lecturers said um, I have to pose other questions if it is a digitalized form. There's absolutely no difference um, for me. Yeah. No, definitely not. <laughs> you will. You will more or less, um, well, I, I don't know what I'm, what I'm asking. <laughs> no, I, uh, I think about it uh, during uh, December, I think. But it doesn't matter which form you choose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. Anything else? But this was important. This I <laughs> actually forgot. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm So, or actually, I know that um, other lecturers said they have to pose other questions um, because they cannot uh, just ask, um, recapitulate slide uh, 16, because then you have slide 16 um, <coughs> on your computer and you can just write it down and not in an exam form in the presence, but you, you won't get um, questions like this from me anyway. <laughs> No matter if it's in presence or it's a e-house or what. Okay, then um, yeah, we will more or less then start with the content and with this literature overview. And I already said the first two books. These are uh, yeah maybe the most or let's say the three one because he also then split it this in uh, general economics and then the special macroeconomics. But you will find more or less the same topics about macroeconomics in both books. Um, these are more or less, um, yeah, standard uh, literature on macroeconomics. And what it is quite important. So we are also do will do here some math in this class and uh, especially yeah and. Um, we, I say, I say, um, uh, we try to model social sciences into math. And some, uh, sometimes, I said to you that um, in my first life I was a physicist, so I have done uh, very much math. <laughs> and um, sometimes maybe we try to to do too much math to describe our own behavior. Because this is what economics is about. We want to be describe our own behavior. What we are producing. This is what we are doing. What we are demanding. This is what we want. 
And well, we have there some mathematical concepts, but nobody, especially if we live in a free democracy, nobody can say that we have to eat every morning an apple. So I can say for my own preferences that I like to eat every day an apple. And mathematically, I can model that in general, on average, in this class, maybe then on average, six apples are eaten every morning. But of course, the next day, it could be the case that only one apple is eaten, or in two days, there will be 12 apples. Because we are free to choose what we are, do, we are doing. And um, because of this, that we are a social science, there is no true model how the economy, the economy has to behave, how the price increase which we see right now has to go on or when it has to stop. And uh, this we will also do in our course that, yeah, <clears throat> so to speak, we have more or less um, two very different views how the economy is working, how <clears throat> the economy is going on. And um, the one view is, yeah, let's say the more, more or less classical view on economics. And this was um, the view for when we say that, it, um, <clears throat> that uh, yeah, econo 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 <coughs> economics as a science started with Adam Smith or something like this, so in the 18th, in the 17th, 18th uh, century, then for more or less two, 250 years, they had, we had this classical view of the economy, and then came the world economic crisis in the 1930s, and this was one time where more or less everything was different. Because in this case, then the um, yeah, polit political things which we have done in this crisis, they all were based on a classical view. Mm -hmm. And in the aftermath of this crisis, mm -hmm. we have seen that what we have done in this crisis was wrong. Mm -hmm. That we then in the 30s, especially in Europe and for Germany, it was a total catastrophe because <clears throat> then um, the Nazis came into power in the aftermath of the um, uh, world economic crisis in the 1930s, because it doesn't wor have worked in this framework of the economy. It doesn't have worked in the United States, and especially it doesn't have worked in, uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And there we had then a, yeah, a new view, and this view was based on a very famous economist. Maybe you know his name. This was John Maynard Keynes, uh -huh. and this is the so-called Keynesianism. Mm -hmm. And somehow, if you ask somebody also in the situation where we are right now with inflation, with a recession in front of us, mm -hmm. what do we have to do? Mm -hmm. And you ask an economist with a classical view, and you ask, and this is then the school, you, know, uh, you name it as the Keynesianism, mm -hmm. you ask a Keynesianist, mm -hmm. then you get two totally different answers what you have to do right now. And this I also want uh, to provide you here in um, my lecture, that I will give you both views, and that uh, they came to very different um, impacts, what you have to do. Um, in 
the same economic situation. And of course, if you look at the literature and at the books, there also you have always a view behind it. Well, these are all good books, but maybe one book it is driven a bit more from the Keynesian view, and the other book is more driven from a classical view. And this you should also be aware of. And this is also, I think, you need to know that we have these different views in social science, that there is no true model how things are working, and um, that you come then to your own view. That you can really judge the situation in a good, in a logical way, but it's, then it is your own view. And this is yeah, one aim of this class, that you know what we have, that I give you the tools, and in the end, when you start then your own business in four or five years, and uh, <clears throat> you are then Elon Musk or Steve Jobs or anybody else, and you have, so you are, have a, a company which uh, is mac in a macroeconomic way relevant, like Google, like Apple, um, <clears throat> like Tesla right now. And then you also have to judge the general framework. But you also have to judge the general framework of an economy if you are working only in a small business. Mm -hmm. Especially if you look what prices are doing. If you print in input prices, like uh, the situation, uh, like we have the right now, input prices go up by 20, 30, or 40 percent. So your costs are exploding. What you want to do, I think I can also take here the very old tool. Do we have white chalk? No chalk anymore. You see? So. so if you say that you have earnings is price times quantity minus costs depending on quantity and X is something I think you have seen this in um, microeconomics depending on inputs and general inputs are capital and labor in general I think you have seen this and then you have of course here input prices go up by 40% and these are your costs. And then you want to increase, of course, your output prices. Then is this already seen? Yeah. Output. So increase. Oops. So, and then in this situation, try to increase output prices by 20, 30, or 40 percent. What happens? Mm -hmm. Or what could happen? <laughs> we are free to choose. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, that you increase maybe this once and that in a double way your what you are selling in quantity is going down and this this goes up by 20 percent and if this, this goes up by 30 percent then what you are selling is going down in such a way that you are not there anymore as a company and this is yeah, one general problem, what we have um, right now. And about all these problems, we want to talk in this lecture. Okay, this was just a 
general step, but we have to go through all of our um, uh, literature. So in general, more or less, we can maybe say that um, behind Mencu is more or less a more classical view, if you read this book. And in Olivier Blanchard, he was also more sometime the chief economist of uh, the International Monetary Fund. Um, it is a bit more Keynesian view. Not totally, but this is more classical and more um, Keynesian. Um, Barrow is, yeah, maybe a very hard uh, classical economist. Um, this is also, yeah, a bit more theory, this book, than the others. Uh, Brugman, maybe you know him. He has also a very famous blog um, at the New, New York Times about um, economic issues. If you are interested, uh, you can uh, have a look uh, at his uh, blog. He is a Nobel laureate, I think, from 2016. One of the most famous economists during the last 20 years, 25 years. Uh, and he can, you can say, he is more or less a pure Keynesianist. Um, then we have also a quite new book, Burda and Wiplosch. Um, they have a special look on the macroeconomic side on um, the Europe European economy. You will see that here in uh, my lecture, since we are in Germany, um, most of the data I will provide you is about the German economy in this course. Um, here you have much data about the European economy. Um, and then these last two books, um, let's say, quite theoretically and mathematically. So we do here also, of course, some mathematics. Um, we have, of course, uh, much more elaborated models um, from the mathematics sides. And if you are interested in this way, uh, I will um, especially recommend if somebody wants to go on afterwards uh, doing a master in economics, uh, something like this. Then um, I think uh, here at the Jade Hochschule we do, uh, yeah, we do it in a in a quite good way. Also compared with um, other small universities, we are doing in micro in macroeconomics um, quite a lot compared to other. Um, small universities uh, or um, uni universities of applied science. Um, so you have a quite good fundament if you want to do um, an, um, a master in economics. But if you then switch to a larger universities and let's say uh, you want to study pure uh, economics, so to speak, uh, then I would recommend that you just start reading that you have seen something um, more theoretical um, work about these topics in economics. If you have any questions then about this, also just come to me. But this um, you should keep in mind. If you want to go further, then um, have a look on this. Okay, so there's my mouse. So this, I think, we have already talked about. So social science, there is no right model. There is not the truth about economics. And this we should be aware of. Then this was a question. Um, I do my own lecture, but anyhow, Mencu, Blanchard, and so on. These are good textbooks. Have a look at it <coughs> inside. 
And this is then uh, up to your questions. You will get the slides, exercises, videos, review questions, and also here, I think. All the, the edited slides, what all what I'm writing down here uh, on my tablet. Uh, this we you will also get. So then uh, there is one part, and this you do not or you cannot find in such a way in uh, in a textbook because a textbook is written. Then it's printed or it is published as an ebook, but then it was written one or two years before. But the economy has moved on. And let's, let's just take um, a textbook which uh, was published um, in uh, which was published one and a half year ago. Mm -hmm. What you then find there on time series, on um, economic aggregates, and so on, is then always based on 2020, maybe the first month of 2021. This is a, then a quite new textbook, if you take it in summer 21. But now we are one year on. And the world economically has totally changed. So this is no critics on this book because you cannot find this in this book. But I um, really recommend also when you have finished your studies that you really try to use data already here in your studies at the university. Because this is, I think, nothing you can learn really in a lecture. <laughs> this you have also to do by your own. We will do quite, uh, uh, um, um, quite many things. I have also e examples and there I will also do the, um, the calculations with, with you with an Excel. So really try to find data and really try to manipulate data in some easy software program. And I think the easiest way, because this is, um, you have it generally everywhere in the world, is some Office pa package. You can take this from Microsoft or some free package, LibreOffice, OpenOffice or something like this. But really start to use these programs. And this I can really say to you from my own life. Um, I came from university. I told you I came from the physics side. So in the exams in economics, I did always yeah the theoretical parts. There I got many points and then I said, well, of course, I will pass the exam. And then I came outside and I told you um, I started at the scientific staff in the uh, Council of Economic Advisors and it was just the time when all the things have started. Everything has changed um, when I started my job there. There, um, my topic was also to look at central banks and prices, of course. This was my PhD. Well, and then was uh, my task, my first task was then, in Germany we have something special in the banking sector because we have a large part in um, public banks. I don't know um, the foreign people if you um, have heard of this. We have these kind of banks. Maybe you have um, there your banking account. This is uh, banks called Sparkassen, savings banks. And then we have also Volksbanken. Um, and this is quite large in Germany. This is very special. And also this part of the banking sector got in deep trouble in the financial crisis. And then my first task was have a look at the data at this part 
of the banking sector of Germany. Well, I knew what is a balance sheet. I knew there are assets and liabilities, but I didn't knew much more about it. And then I had to crawl into the data and get deep into the data and I had to manipulate that I get uh, information out of it and so on. And if you can do this, I can really say it. This is then a huge plus, huh? which, would, which you would have then in the labor market, if you can do this. And actually, I don't know that, I don't think that you, that we can say, let's take uh, three months and we give a lecture on this. Just try to do it in every lecture. And I will provide you many examples where you can do it. And this is then here. What is this about? Where do I get the data? Where do I get the informations? And here, of course, especially from the macroeconomic side. But all the institutions you find here, you, of course, get also many economic information, many economic data about very special topics. If you're interested in some special sector of the economy, then of course, in, uh, in a second, um, at these institutions, you find scientific papers, you find a study or something else about this topic. And therefore, I really recommend go on the web pages and just search and look, have a look at it for a bachelor thesis, for some homework you have to in other topics, just do it. Because I haven't done it when I have studied. I did only theory. And then I have to do it when I was in the labor market. Yeah. Uh, there we will uh, do it really in a in a special exam uh, example, and we will do it together. So, uh, yeah. no, not uh, um, not in this way. This is yet now in a general way. What is maybe more than what we are doing here in the lecture? There, I recommend just do something more. <laughs> This will be not uh, then the content uh, in the exam and so on. For this, we will have some really special examples, which we are doing together. And uh, there I have then also um, exercises, um, uh, um, what we are doing there. And this we will do all together. And this is here some general information where I would recommend if you are interested in some economic field, so you don't have to ask Google, so then you have to, you can maybe more or less just ask my slide and then you go to here some institutions and let's go through these institutions, um, the um, uh, statistical institutions in every country. So every developed country has a statistical institutions and the Statistical Bundesamt is then, of course, where you get the general information about data in Germany. Bundesbank is the German central bank. Of course, if you are interested in Ireland, if you make some market analysis, maybe in some other, uh, I think in, um, in term five or six, there we have something like global economics or something, and then your task is to an analyze South America or something like this. Then, of course, have a look at the Central Bank of Brazil also. Then you get the data from there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, of course, ECB, European Central Bank, the Fed counterpart in the United States, States or now uh, Great Britain has quit the European Union, Bank of England. OECD, this is more or less an um, institution of the developed countries in the world. There you find much data, of course, at the uh, International Monetary Fund. Here you have all, always um, 
provided the link. So if I think in this way it works, oh yes. So you can just control and clicking on it, and then we will be on the side. There's my mouse. Yeah. And then you are on the side of the monetary font. Then uh, World Bank, of course, in a general way. Um, SVR, this is uh, Sachverständigenrat. I talked about it, Council of Economic Advisors in Germany. Something like this you also find uh, in the developed countries. And EA, uh, this is the unemployment or or organization in Germany. There you find unemployment data. And then, of course, um, we have scientific institutes, and in Germany we have quite a lot of it, and all these here are all scientific institutes. Let's um, just click on this one. This is the Institute um, for the World Economy in Germany. Let's see what we find there. Oops, no, this is the IMF. There it is. Da. And there's also an English page. And here you find quite a lot uh, economic information, economic data. And if you write in one or two years your bachelor thesis and you need some information, I really can recommend that you go to these scientific institutions because they are I think already somebody has thought about your topic, what you are want to write about your bachelor thesis. So my mouse is again there. So Bruegel, also from this here up to the ZEV, these are all uh, German institutions. Bruegel is a, yeah, so to speak, um, European institution. Maybe you hear some um, from Bruegel in the news on the economic impact of um, uh, the um, war in the Ukraine. Uh, this is the institutions from Brussels. Neither is um, economic institutions in Great Britain, ESRI in Ireland, and the ER, Peterson Institute, and Brookings Institutions. These are scientific economic institutions in the United States, and they are, of course, much more. Search the World Wide Web in a good way, so to speak. Not only just put Google, but try to find the relevant data in the World Wide Web. OK, I think I will end then with this general slide. And next week, we will then start with, you have asked the question in this direction, I think, um, with the real content then here in this lecture. So what is economics? What is economics about? Mm -hmm. With this general question, we will start next week and then we, come, we will uh, go to more detail what is macroeconomics about. Okay, so I stopped the recording.